Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video we're going to be taking a look at CC Cleaner, otherwise known as Crap Cleaner, and walk through the features that are available in this app for Windows. So when you boot up CC Cleaner, you're going to see the Cleaner, Registry, and Tools on the left, and those are basically where all of your functionality is going to lie within this app. So the Cleaner allows you to free up space on your computer, and how it does this is it scans through your computer and finds a bunch of unnecessary temporary files that can be cleaned for more space. A big one would be emptying your recycle bin for you if you've uh, tried to delete a lot of files but you haven't permanently deleted it in many cases. And to do this, um, after selecting which areas you'd like to target, which often is unnecessary honestly because I find the defaults are perfectly fine, you would go ahead and hit Analyze or Run Cleaner. Analyze will basically determine how much space it's going to be removing and from what areas, and Run Cleaner is just going to go ahead and actually take care of the process. You might notice actually that uh, you can run the cleaner without analyzing it at all. Um, if you're confident that it's pretty much totally fine for all of these things to be removed, which in most cases it is because they're temporary files, uh, then you can just go ahead and run the cleaner. But in this case, I'm going to analyze it first, just so that we can kind of see what that looks like. Now, one thing to note is that uh, for CC Cleaner to work properly and to actually target all of your applications, it's pretty much going to need your web browsers to be closed, like Google Chrome and Firefox. It can close it for you, so I'm just going to go ahead and hit Yes here. And that can be a pretty big deal because, uh, as you can see, a lot of the extra hard drive space that can be freed up is often from the internet cache and your web browsers. Uh, you can see here that that's about 350 megabytes right there. Now, uh, normally, uh, a typical computer is actually going to have more stuff to free up than the, uh, this run is actually going for. Uh, the reason it's so low is because I have recently run the program, so just to note there. Now let's go ahead and run the cleaner, and we can see that it just goes ahead, clears out everything we uh, just went over, and it's a very quick way to actually remove some uh, unnecessary files from your computer. Now, uh, the registry cleaner, the second tab, this is more about uh, speeding up your computer and preventing error messages from coming up. If you don't already know, the Windows registry is uh, a database where Windows stores a lot of its important information, like uh, application links, for instance. And by uh, scanning the registry for issues, it can help remove some dead links or uh, bad information that can normally cause error messages. Fixing those problems and then returning it back. And theoretically, this can also uh, speed up your computer a bit because <clears throat> if your computer is not trying to access bad data or data that shouldn't be there or there's less entries in the registry, that's going to make it go a little bit quicker. So here we do need to scan for issues before we can actually fix them. Uh, once again, not going to be nearly as many uh, as you'd probably see, uh, simply because I've run it pretty recently. But one thing I will point out is these uh, listings for the Andy Android emulator. These are showing because I had recently uninstalled the Andy emulator. And whenever programs are uninstalled, sometimes they leave behind uh, information that really is unnecessary because the app is no longer there. So you might see examples like this if you've done a lot of installing and uninstalling recently. So I'm just going to go ahead and fix the selected issues. It's not too important generally to understand what all of these really mean. Um, but one thing I would recommend you do is that uh, when you do do this, back up the changes and save this uh, backup file somewhere on your computer. I typically use the C drive uh, just as a convenient location to have it stored. So I'm just going to go ahead and save this with the default naming scheme. And now I'm pretty confident that I can just go ahead and fix all the selected issues. If something did go wrong, you can restore it to the earlier registry. Though I should note, I've never had to do that once, so usually fixing all selected issues is totally fine. Now, the third set of tools here has quite a few more options, uh, but really it's the cleaner in the registry that you normally use, but let's go ahead and walk through these. So the uninstall tab allows you, predictably, to uninstall apps on your computer, much like you can do in the control panel for Windows. Uh, this just provides an extra location for you to be able to do it. Um, so if you're trying to free up space, I would just recommend filtering by size. 
And you can see, yeah, World of Warcraft takes up a lot of information, for instance. So if you have games that you're no longer playing, those are usually a really good target for things you can remove from more space. Now with startup, this may actually have a bigger impact on your initial performance, uh, like when you've actually booted into the operating system, uh, simply because if you have too many startup programs, then it's going to be taking up a lot of extra resources in the background of services that are potentially completely unnecessary. So if you go over here and you see some things that you don't think you really need, like let's say you only use OneDrive every now and then and you don't really need it to be always booted into, you can just select it, go ahead and disable, and then that program won't automatically boot with Windows. And if you disable quite a few different options here, uh, that can really help out. Uh, just make sure that you're not uh, disabling something that could be quite important, like uh, I believe this is the Realtek Audio, these two right here, and I wouldn't want to actually disable that because Realtek is audio drivers, for instance. With the Browser Plugins tab, you can find out which plugins are actually running when you boot up a web browser and disable some of them if you find them to be unnecessary. Uh, similar to disabling startup programs, disabling browser plugins just removes a lot of the overhead that these uh, web browsers are going to take up. And web browsers can be quite resource intensive in some cases. So you can go through the list of things here and see if there are any that are completely unnecessary for you when you're working in the browser. Um, let's see, for instance, the Foxit Reader plugin may be unnecessary. I'll go ahead and leave that there for right now. Let's see, the Google Chrome probably don't need the Netflix app booted right there because I normally just go to the website for that. And you get the idea here. You can disable whatever you don't need. Alternatively, you can just go into the web browser itself, uh, look at the settings or the extensions list, and disable it there instead. The disk analyzer allows you to find out which types of files are taking up a large percentage of your computer's hard drive resources. Uh, simply by analyzing. Now in my case, videos are going to be a big part of that, uh, obviously because I make a lot of videos for YouTube. So once this goes ahead and scans through the computer, it's going to basically list how many gigabytes are dedicated to photos, how many are dedicated to videos, and what percentage of the computer that takes up. So if you had like 50 or 100 gigabytes of video files and that was actually taking up too much space for you, you could simply go ahead, look at the list of uh, videos here in MP4 format, and go ahead and select some of these for deletion. Now, if you want to delete these files, you would simply right-click somewhere and go ahead and hit Delete Selected Files. Alternatively, if you want to delete all files of one category at once, which I would not usually recommend because you might accidentally delete something you don't want to lose, you could go ahead and uh, click the select all and then delete selected files. But really, before you are going to go ahead and delete some of your videos or whatever kind of files you're trying to clean up, make sure that you're not deleting something you want to keep because getting them back would kind of be a pain. The duplicate finder will find, obviously, duplicate files on your computer. Um, however, I would be careful using this one as well. It's not a tool I particularly use, but just because a file is duplicate, as is, as in it's in the same spot, two locations on your computer, doesn't necessarily mean that it's not necessary to have it in both locations on your computer. Uh, so if you're going to use this, I would be careful about it and uh, just make sure you read up some more guides specifically on Duplicate Finder Online. And then uh, the System Restore will uh, allow you to clear out extra uh, system restore points if you don't want to have, say, 10 backups anymore and you just want to keep the latest two um, system restore backups. You can clear some of the old ones out here by selecting them and hit remove. Now finally with the drive wiper you have the option to completely remove all data on one of your hard drives or you can uh, wipe the free space on one of your hard drives. Now this might be a little bit confusing because you would think oh that's just like deleting a file but if you've already deleted the file then it's gone from your hard drive right? Well, um, when you delete a file on Windows, it's not actually officially gone. It's just that Windows no longer has a reference to that file. So the data is still there. 
it's just not immediately accessible. So if you actually want to completely clean that data off of your hard drive, you would use free space only. And then all of that lingering data that's not referenced but still exists on the hard drive would be cleaned out by selecting that, choosing the drive you want to clean up, and then wiping it. Uh, likewise, doing the entire drive, which you should never do with your uh, main hard drive, it probably won't, yeah, it doesn't even allow you to do it. For obvious reasons, Windows is on the hard drive. Um, it will clean everything. So you'd only be able to do this with a secondary hard drive. Finally, with the options tab, you can find some extra control over CC Cleaner. I'm not going to cover all of these options, but what I do want to mention is the Cookies tab over here. Whenever you clean out um, all of the internet cookies on each of your browsers using the cleaner, if you don't have these cookies or the domain of these cookies added to cookies to keep, what's that going to mean is that basically the data you had stored for one of those accounts, like accounts.google.com in the case of email, or lastpass.com in the case of your login information for last uh, last pass, it's going to completely remove that. So if you don't want to have to keep putting in your information every time for those kinds of services, then you should add them as cookies to keep over here. And if you're wondering where all the cookies to add to cookies to keep are right here, well, currently they're all gone because it's been cleaned out with the cleaner. But if you haven't cleaned yet, then your current cookies will show over here on Cookies on Computer. So that's just about it to CC Cleaner Free. Uh, I hope this got you started in understanding the application and how it can be used to help you and your computer out. I've been Chris. Thank you very much for watching, and hopefully I'll see you in my next video.